Architecture is about making spaces. Spaces for people. It can be inside a building. It can be a space formed by a building. It can be anything that's inhabited. And architecture hopefully improves the quality of our lives. If it's good, um, if it's bad, if it's mediocre, any way at all, it influences. It influences how we feel. It's a place for contemplation, for revolt, for change, for harmony, for whatever. But it's common, it's common throughout history, over time, over ages, it's a constant. Space, common ground, it's common to all of us and it influences our lives. The only constant is change and change is about evolution, it's about innovation, it's about new ways of doing things. If we were having this conversation over a Biennale 20 years ago, we would still be talking about the same subjects. But the technology, some of that technology, dramatic change, and has changed the many aspects of the way that we communicate. So that is through a process of innovation. And innovation can also come through, through buildings, but, but in the end, it is about the enduring qualities, about those qualities which don't change. So the technology of electronic communication still brings you and I together here at this event. The technology is such we don't need to be here together. These, everybody here, the many hundreds of thousands who pass through that gateway there, through this experience here, don't need to come, don't need to be physically here. But there are more people in Venice now than there were 20 years ago. As a society, we're about exchanging ideas, experiences. We learn from each other. Um, as individuals, we have our mentors, our teachers, our educators, our parents, um, the many generations who've gone before. We don't exist in isolation. We're all part of a larger community, whether we deny it or not. Um, so whether you call that fashionably networking, um, Again, that is, that's not changed. That's as relevant today as it was thousands of years ago. And architecture, of course, is the platform. Um, whether that's high architecture in the sense that you can identify an architect, or whether it's a public space in a favela where you cannot name the person or the group who decreed that this space should be for the community as opposed to the individual or the family. I think we've touched on that already, the importance of the internet, the importance of technolo technology as we see it now, technology as we see it in the future. Um, it's a tool, an important tool and a critical tool, and can change many aspects of our lives but there are certain things which do endure. Um, so one interpretation of the internet is, as I was saying earlier, we don't have to be physically here together, and yet that is a constant. It's like the paperless office. Um, you have a bag, it's full of paper. Um, certain things don't change, even though the technology would allow us to dispense with that, would allow us not to come together physically. I think it's an extraordinary profession. Um, I think it is, um, is probably one of the few professions where it is totally generalist. Um, so my, my advice would be enjoy it, immerse in it, um, and um, and have conviction, have a passion. Um, you have to have a passion and you have to be an optimist. I think it's, 
um, that probably the most difficult design problem is how, when you have a passion for architecture, um, and when you're driven by curiosity and, um, and the sharing of experiences um, and research, all of which enable you to work as a designer, um, that, that when the scale of those opportunities grow and you genuinely believe that architecture is about different specialities coming together as a team, dissolving their own identities and working together as a group. As the scale of those projects and the scale of the team grows, then the challenge is how do you maintain that very individual personal touch and how ultimately do you, um, can you grow the group in such a way that it has the capability and the potential to go on beyond one's own lifetime.